All right, hey, what's up, everybody? Now, me, I'm a nerd when it comes to things. Um, when I say I'm a nerd when it comes to things is when I decide to jump into a venture, I really deep dive into it. And then what I've been deep diving into has been the YouTube shorts. And this is just something that I noticed. And I looked at many channels and Alex, we're guilty of it also posting YouTube shorts. But I looked at it, uh, many channels and looked at the YouTube shorts and I look in the comment section and I look in the comment section and a lot of the comments are alternative to what the video short is talking about. Um, so today I want to just dive into how YouTube shorts, uh, Instagram reels, you know, all these short form uh, displays of financial literacy is destroying people's financial education. And what I mean by that is people believe that the whole concept is in a 60 second video. And what it's doing is, and before I get there, understand one thing. We are in an instant gratification world, meaning that People want to consume content instantly. That's why Instagram, I mean, YouTube shorts, Instagram reels, that's a very popular avenue of the concept. And then we think that that's all the information, but in truth and reality, that's a snippet of the information that needs to be provided. And then people see these shorts. I mean, remember, it's only 60 seconds max. They see these YouTube shorts and they think that's the end all be all. It's, it's, they think that once I have this information, I can go run off and do whatever I want to do. And the YouTube shorts platform, the short form platform, it's cool to draw attention, but it's not good to give information. And with the giving of information that people are receiving in a very short microcosm form, it's destroying their financial education and you see it all around you. So, Alex, I'm going to ask you because, you you know, you watched the Graham Stephens of the world in the long form before all these shorts came about. What do you see? What do you see in the landscape of the information that you was watching in the long form and then information that you see in YouTube shorts? Yeah, in the long form, when I started watching Graham Stephens and stuff, um, influencers like him, they actually did a ton of research prior to the video. So they researched the topic, whatever the topic would be, and they would find, they would take out all the highlights of that research and they would show everything. They would go into detail and into depth about what it was and thoroughly explain it within 15 to 20 minutes. And now with YouTube shorts, people, I would say maybe aren't as inclined to watch long form and they prefer to watch the short videos and in the short videos you can only get like a small segment out of the long form but rarely out of a long conversation can you actually get a highlight into 30 to 60 seconds without watching the rest of the video and so it's difficult to actually grasp what they're talking about and we see it with our videos too or we'll post a video and it may we make a point on our shorts you know but you got to watch what you said before and then what you said after to actually understand what the topic is that we're talking about and it's hard to actually explain everything in just 30 to 60 seconds right and and the thing that made me deep dive into it was so i'm at this investor meetup here in Tampa, Florida. And I'm sitting there, everybody got on a fancy cologne, you know, suits and all that. Me, I show up kind of like this. <laughs> and uh, and then I'm just sitting there, you know, we having a round table, everybody's talking. And then the thing I noticed, and I, at first I'm just intrigued because I'm thinking that these are guys that, you know, own businesses, they're in operations looking for another business. They're looking for investors or they're looking for operators to expand their portfolio and what have you. But what I come to find out after about the third or fourth person spoke was I was listening to YouTube shorts. 
I was listening to, and this meetup was about buying businesses. This was not a like real estate, what's the name? So what I realized was after I'm listening to these people, they're regurgitating the stuff that I hear from Cody Santez on YouTube shorts. What I'm hearing from Alex Armozi and his wife, Layla on shorts. Where I'm here, where I hear shorts all the time. And they, they say these uh, nuanced topics and nuanced things, but the key of it, like they talking about, you know, NOI, they talking about return on investment. They talking about EBITDA. They talking about looking at, you know, looking at financial financials and things or what have you. But then I noticed that they talked about these words, this lingo that, you know, they talk about in the financial space, but they didn't know how to derive to get to these numbers. And then, so I'm sitting here looking like, are y'all just watching the YouTube shorts or do y'all actually know, understand the game? So as, of course, while I'm in the meetup, I'm, it's like, I mean, for me, it's like investigation. It's, so I'm listening here, listening to people talk, and then all these people talking big fancy words, they're talking, you know, great stuff. But then you come to realize that all these people, they're talking all this business lingo, but none of them have a business. None of them are buying a business. I mean, maybe it was only one person in there, and that was a female that was sitting next to me. Me and her was the only one that have a business. Me and her was the only one that had real estate portfolios. Everybody else was just starting out trying to do it. I mean, it was people literally sitting there that didn't have a that didn't have a job or nothing. And they said, oh no, you shouldn't, you shouldn't work, work at all. And then the only thing you should do is strive for business. He got a wife and kids and he's sitting at home talking about he been diving through the diving through the, you know, for sale by biz or business of sales for the last six months trying to look for a business to buy. But he don't have the capital to buy the business, so he's looking for some creative way to finance it. You know, Cody Sanchez, I love her content, her long-form content, but the short-form content has really shortened the people's thought process, thinking that, oh, everything that's in the short, that's all I need to know, and then I can go out there and repeat this, and people will bend over and give me deals. And then these people at the meetup didn't realize the reason why you can't find deals or reason why you can't do deals and the reason why people won't back deals because they realize you're not an operator. You don't have the financial literacy to understand what's going on. And you don't even know how to run the numbers to make sure this is a good business. I talked to a guy that was there that he said every, every business that he looked up had increasing profit and increasing revenue over the past five years. I look at the same websites as this guy look at. I know the numbers and I know how to deep dive into the numbers. There's no way in hell every business has increasing revenue, increasing profits, especially with inflation, cost of goods, labor costs, utility costs, insurance costs, and everything going up. The revenue could be growing, but the profits damn sure not going on a percentage basis wise because there is more cost and more input into generating those generating that revenue. But he said every business that he looked at had it. And then so to me, that showed me he only looked at financial statements that anybody could generate on the Excel. He didn't go look at tax returns. He didn't go deep dive into the business and go into the business and talk to, you know, the financial department, the CFO and things of, of that nature. But that's the mindset that people are getting. They're watching these YouTube shorts thinking that's the, all the information they know. And they're not thinking of the attitude of, okay, YouTube shorts is out there just to give people a snippet of what's going on. And then the, the frame of that is to intrigue them to want to go watch the long form video to deep to dive more deeper into the subject matter the youtube shorts is not the end all be all to the the concept that the content creator is trying to push across but i think that the short algorithm the uh, short form content it's good as in driving attention but it is bad at and it's bad because of the the people that's consuming it. They think that's all that they need to know about a, a simple subject or topic before they go dive into the endeavor. I think the other thing, not to keep it too long, but the other thing with YouTube Shorts is that, or any any short form, Instagram Reels, all this stuff, is that sometimes a lot of the videos that I see are too sophisticated and they're teaching good information and good tactics for investing but for investors that are already established which is good you know maybe 
in, you know, maybe investors that are already in the game need more information, but it gets in the hands of those that don't know anything as well. And then think like, okay, let me go ahead and refinance my home and buy a rental property. And they have no idea what they're doing. So I think that's the other downside of it too, is that it gives people that know nothing about finance and nothing about financial literacy too much information that they don't know what to do with that information and they just jump into something that they don't know what they're doing. Right. And and I'm glad you brought up that point about refinancing a home and going to buy a rental property. Yeah, it's okay to refinance a home and buy a rental property, but you want to refinance your home when the interest rates are lower or you can drive cash flow from the rental property that will pay for whatever interest expense that you take on from refinancing your house. I see people refinancing blindly. They refinancing at 8%, then maybe buying the rental property cash or buying the rental property at another 8%. And then the cash flow from both is not paying for one. And then the job that these people actually work in, they have to unask more money to cover that refinance that they did on the house. It's, it's a numbers game. Men lie, women lie, numbers don't. And I'm not saying content creators are lying. What I'm saying is, Content creators are giving you information and you're lying to yourself to thinking a 60 second video will be enough to give you the information that you need. People, the consumers, I'm talking to the audience here. You need to deep dive into this content, the long form structure. And then once you dive into the long form structure, you need to go look online and see what the numbers mean. Seeing, I know all the words that we say on this video and other content creators say on videos, you don't know what the meaning of these words, some of them. So go look them up and see what they mean. See how you derived these numbers. If the numbers don't make sense, then the deal don't make sense. For the life of me, I'm so tired of hearing people, especially people in the real estate game, and they're new to the game, and they're talking about appreciation, appreciation, appreciation. Yeah, appreciation is cool, but what happened if the cash flow is not covering the mortgage, the, the maintenance, the vacancy, and things like that? That means you have to... Use more of your money that you work your W-2 job for to pay for somebody else to live. You need to understand the numbers that work. Cash flow is the thing that matter. Appreciation comes second. But I see it all the time. I mean, I'm so tired of people and bigger pockets is a great platform. But people are looking at the shorts of bigger pockets. They're not looking at everything. And the next thing you know, they sitting there in a bad situation. I remember and I know I'm dragging along on the video. I remember I was in uh, San Antonio at a meetup, San Antonio, Texas. And a guy came up to me, all proper and prim. And he's talking about, hey, do you watch? He first he talk, started talking about investing. And then he's talking about how he's not making cash flow, but the appreciation is going to be wild. And then how he's on his fifth or sixth property just during the COVID era when interest rates was low. And then now, and then I asked him, I said, you're buying based on what the rents could be in the future what if they don't get there now the rents are not getting there and and i'm telling them like this is not the way to go but of course you know he think he watched you know six episodes of bigger pockets so he know more than somebody that's been in the game for years and have multiple properties that cash flow on all of them and then now fast forward you know i called back to san antonio you know about two three months ago and he's in a bad place and you see that all over Florida also. You st I get real estate investors who bought during the COVID times who reaching out to me to ask, hey, hey, can you take this property off my hands? No, I can't take the property off your hands because the property don't cash flow. When the property cash flows, then I can take it off your hands. Cash flow positive, I could take it off your hands, but not before and not until. But they base they based their whole investment thesis on appreciation or they based it on future future possible rent. And that's what that's what crushed them. And I'm thinking it's going to be a lot of opportunities because a lot of people that's watching YouTube shorts thinking that they know what's going on and they're going to give opportunities for the real investors. So I mean, said, guys, if you have any comments, let us know down below. Share this video, subscribe, like the video, and we'll see you guys in the next one.